My my, time sure flies, doesn't it? It's already been over a full year since I posted my video pertaining to the status of Rockman EXE's preservation, covering the games, anime, and manga. A whole lot has happened in the past 375 days, though. Let's see where we're at now, shall we? While the Nintendo Wii U eShop may be shut down, removing one outlet of digital distribution for this game series, and the hard copies on the original GBA and DS still fetch a high price, we now have an easily accessible Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, including all six of the mainline games with both versions of Battle Network 3 through 6. In addition to all the previously removed Japanese content, including the Boktai side quest for BN6, the event battle chips, and all 499 e-reader mod cards built right into the game. Best of all, online PvP for every game. This will help to keep the active community alive, as well as roping in newcomers. While the collection doesn't feature Battleship Challenge, EXE 4.5, or Network Transmission, I still think it's possible for these games to be re-released in the near-ish future. They could possibly be added to a different Mega Man collection, or the remaining two GBA games could be ported to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, which now features Game Boy Advance games. While this is only a temporary service and will eventually shut down, it at least has the potential to keep these two games alive in the short term if this comes to pass. Currently, we have no foreseen updates on official re-releases for EXE Wonderswan or N1 Battle, nor the mobile games, though the mobile game preservation fan project is still in the works and is making progress. As for the manga, we've had some very exciting developments. Since my last video, we've gotten two completely new chapters of Ryotaka Masaki's Rockman EXE manga, and while we don't currently have a fan translation for Forte Time of Reunion and are not likely to get an official English release, we did get an official release for the Battle Network 20 Year Reunion manga in English, and more chapters are on the way, releasing later this year. The fact that new chapters are still coming out means that the series is very much alive. On another note, Battle Story Mega Man NT Warrior is currently being translated by a person going under the name Chaos Forte RV. They are apparently using the French volumes as a template and adapting the text to English, seemingly attempting a localization in line with the other works that share the title of NT Warrior. Currently, they've only posted a few rough drafts to show the basic concept. I'll have a link to their Twitter in the description. Let's wish them the best of luck on this project. And now, the topic I was most concerned about during the previous video, the status of the anime. While we've not heard anything about an official re-release on paid streaming services or Blu-ray, the entire anime is being posted to the Japanese Capcom YouTube channel, along with the movie, even if they are unsubbed, and every dubbed episode was streamed to Twitch and was posted to the English Capcom channel, including a high-quality version of Access, with no watermarks and no quality degradation from recording. While nothing has been announced yet, the fact that a DVD-quality version of Access's dub does exist, minus the first episode apparently, and was made available to the public, this means that we might get some form of home release later. Or, if nothing else, archivists can preserve the higher quality episodes. The same can be said for the Japanese version. Even if we never get an officially subtitled version of the anime, fansub projects can now use higher quality footage too. Not all hope is lost for an official subtitled release though, if the first episode of Access is any indication. If you haven't watched the anime yet, then now's your chance. The Japanese version will be on the Capcom channel until the end of May, and the English version will be on the Capcom USA channel until September. We also still have EXE being featured in crossovers with other works, like Metabots and Rockman X Dive, as well as having lots of new merchandise released in the wake of the Legacy Collection's announcement. The best way I can summarize my feelings is that I've never in my life been so happy to have been proven wrong. The announcement of the Legacy Collection came out just two months after my video dropped, and as fate would have it, it released a mere seven days after the one-year anniversary of the video in question. Since I've been paying closer attention to the community and spearheading a community-led project, and after seeing so many fan works in development and being released, one thing that I've learned is that even if the publishers may not come through in keeping our favorite IPs alive, the fans most definitely will. That's not to devalue the Legacy Collection or the team behind EXE, mind you. They delivered us a masterpiece, a love letter to the fanbase and to our childhood dreams of yesteryear. If they didn't care, then the celebration wouldn't have been this spectacular. I think it goes without saying, but the Battle Network Legacy Collection is leaps and bounds more impressive than the other Legacy Collections, and it fills me with hope for the future of this franchise. This time last year, I had a very dour outlook on Mega Man's future, but with how eventful things have been in the past 12 months, I think tomorrow may be brighter than ever, with the amount of care that's been poured into this franchise by the developers, the publishers, and not least of all, the fans. We still have a ways to go to ensure that certain aspects of the franchise maintain their accessibility, but the amount of progress that has been made in just one short year is truly awe-inspiring.